you know God's dream for my life wasn't just to make me secure in myself so that I will not be ashamed and embarrassed of people I remember when I was younger and we just started a youth group we were renting a church and I was I think I was about 16 years of age I just got my license and we had a Thursday night midweek service it was just like this except there was only six of us and my English you think I have an accent now my English was exceptionally exceptionally amazing undeveloped as there are six of us sitting in the first first little five or six seats a guy comes in into the our youth group a very small youth group he comes to pick up one of those guys from there and he was drunk so he begins to make fun of my English in front of my peers I felt so terrible I'm barely trying to walk out of my insecurity you know trying to defeat that trying to learn get the confidence of speaking in front of five people and here's a guy sitting in the back he's making fun of me so I'm speaking and he's interrupting me and all of the people <laughs> they're giggling <laughs> that's funny that's cute that's awesome and so I'm, si I'm standing there and I'm just embarrassed I'm beginning to stutter and I we ended the service really quickly and I remember I was about to call next day call the pastor and say pastor uh, I did I was the youth pastor for six months and I fire myself <laughs> I am not good for this we were in Winko parking lot and I'm contemplating because we didn't have cell phones how I'm gonna come home and use that wired phone most of you don't know what that is but it's the thing that you call and so and I was thinking I'm gonna call my pastor and I'm gonna tell him that I'm 16 year old I don't have Bible education I'm not good enough I, I'm still struggling with insecurity and as I'm thinking what I'm gonna say I'm crying I'm like being a little just a baby girl crying just just weeping it's so hard why do people not like preachers and everything and as I am sitting there the Lord this was one of the first times in my life I've experienced God spoke to me in here in my spirit and he said look at the winko as I looked at the winkle, God started to lead me and give me a dream. So here I am trying to quit. Here I am. I just want to survive. I just want to not be ashamed of people. And God completely doesn't care about that. He's on a planet, completely different planet. And he says, Lord, look at the store. As I'm looking at the store and I see people walking in empty, walking out with a lot of bags, walking out with carts full of, you know, bags of groceries. And people are going in there. Nobody's inviting them. Nobody's dragging them. And hundreds of people walking in and walking out. And the Lord places in my spirit, not in my heart, but in my spirit, I feel the Holy Spirit place. Vlad, if you don't quit one day, that's exactly how the church is going to be. People will come to church by hundreds without even invitation. They will come because there is bread there. And it says 24 hours. And the way the Lord started to put into my heart a dream. The church will be open 24 hours for prayer. It says pharmacy. That people will be healed. I'm 16 years old. Literally quitting. Discouraged and disappointed. But see, God wants me to follow Him fully. Not just out of my pain, but into the prophetic future he has for me and he has for you what is the picture God has that you have to follow God to believe see most of us are happy with our bills being paid for most of us are happy with us being healthy have a job and have a car and have a house to live in but God has a picture of your future and he wants you to follow him into that when honestly living comfortably is so much easier and that day I took that picture inside I will be very honest with you that picture is still here when we worship before the services I like to go upstairs most of you do not know and I just revealed my secret to you I open my blinds and I see how all of you walking in I see different cars and I look and I was like I don't know who that person is before I knew, used to know every single person that came, their name, where they live, the name of their dog, their, their address. Some even, I knew their social security number. And now people are walking in and I'm like, I don't even know. I'm like, I saw that person at the bank. That person works over there. I saw that. I'm like, who is that person? When you believe a picture, God gives you. But it's so different from the reality. That's why God says, I like when you have a different spirit. What's inside of you is so different than what you see. What's inside of you is so different than what's around you. What's inside of you is so different than what's in your wallet. And what's on your relationship status. And God says, but my man Caleb has a different spirit. 
he is with me his reality is wilderness but he has an image of Hebron he has an image of a promised land he carries that there are giants there but he still holds on to that and God says he follows me fully some only follow me to stop drinking but he follows me to start living some follow God to only get married but he follows me to save other marriages he's following me not partially not just a little bit he's following me all the way are you gonna be that person are you gonna follow God fully not just out of your painful past but into the dream that God has for you that completely contradicts your reality contradicts your emotions follow God fully fully all the way to the end till every dream God has on your zip code for you is fulfilled by him in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen let this picture if Jim Carrey the comedian at 1987 being homeless took an empty check and wrote for himself a 10 million dollar check and he dated it in 1985 so 1987 and he takes a checkbook and he writes a check he puts an image in front of himself and says in 1985 I will have 10 million dollars he was not having a contract to be a movie star he was a homeless man with the picture God says Caleb has a different spirit what's inside of your spirit are you carrying grudges is your spirit not free from the pain of the past you have to free your spirit from the pain of the past and you have to fill yourself with the picture of God's prophetic future for your life hold on to that picture even if it contradicts everything inside of you because God's Word which created the reality you have the luxury to enjoy God's Word is powerful to change that reality and when God brings the picture inside of your mind of your future like right now we have a picture that we're praying for it's on our phones it's in our minds to your center being filled you see that's not possible it's also not possible for a virgin Mary to conceive Jesus Christ it's also not possible for so many things but my God says if you hold on to that prophetic picture I will make it happen and Jim Carrey instead of reaching 10 million dollars in 1985 in 1984 there's a movie that came out that many of you watched this so many times and most of us live by that movie dumb and dumber <laughs> you will be surprised did you know how much money it made him exactly 10 million dollars you say but I'm a better actor than Jim Carrey of course you are the only problem you don't have that image that he had that's why you will see Peter people better than you more talented than you people with better education than you people looking better than you talking better than you but they might go higher than you why not because they're better than you their spirit is different while you're over there trying to fight with your ex they're over there protecting a dream while you're over there trying to make everybody feel like to get even with them they are there trying to get ahead while you're over there carrying the memory of your past they're carrying a dream for their future prophetic future when God gives you a word it's a picture that becomes a reality for your future now you also have to be patient like Caleb but when you keep that picture God will make it happen can somebody say amen last year around this time we wanted to give our vehicle away me and my wife had a very nice vehicle and uh, we decided to that we're gonna give it away we were on Saturday driving to Fred Meyer I remember like yesterday I carried this in my heart for some for some weeks and I told her and she says yeah we should do that and I said well let's do that maybe like in a few months let's let it settle we're like no let's just do tomorrow and this way because if we're gonna wait for a few months we're definitely not gonna give it but if we give it tomorrow then we'll just deal with the consequences later like let's live by faith let's do it next day we met with this couple in our church who just had an accident and they lost their vehicle and they were looking for a vehicle we knew that they were looking for a vehicle and they had a, a baby on the way and so we invited them to our house for lunch and as we we're eating now they don't know we have a surprise for them 
And so as we're eating, as we're fellowshipping, we're like, hey, we heard you guys are looking for a vehicle. Any luck? And we're like, no. And we don't have much money, but we're looking for a vehicle. It was like, hey, we wanted to give you a vehicle. They're like, you guys only have one vehicle. We're like, we know. But you guys needed more. So I said, we're giving you a vehicle. But because the bumper was scratched, I said, I'm going to order the bumper, fix the bumper, do oil change, do a few other things, and then give you the car. But from now on, the vehicle is yours. Did you know what happened? They both start crying. Nobody had the keys yet. They didn't take the car with them. You know what they took with them? A promise. Which became a picture. Which produced feelings. But I could lie. The car can burn, get burned out. But see, they trusted someone they knew. When I gave them a promise, they got a picture. They went home as the owners of a vehicle. They let their friends know, we got a car. And when they asked them, where is it at? In here. <laughs>